Growing up to five meters in length, these crocodiles hunt and scavenge. That is a lot of crocs. Mm. Yeah. A hippo carcass just down the river from the studio is instantly set upon by these voracious reptiles. This is about 100 metres in front of us, a classic Luangwa scene. A dead hippo in the water and about 30 crocodiles. What's amazing is that there are two or three hippos that are coming in and actually trying to force the crocodiles off the carcass. Obviously, mum would be one of them. There seems to be a whole gang that are trying to force the crocs off while they tear this thing to pieces. So it's pretty primeval, the whole thing. Hippos and crocodiles normally coexist peacefully, but crocs will take every opportunity to prey on a weak animal or scavenge a dead one. We've seen one or two of these hippos doing these big yawning displays, which is really a threat to the crocodiles. They're trying to drive the crocodiles off with this big yawn and you know, sharp teeth and everything, but the crocs obviously are not intimidated by that at all. And the crocs are here in numbers, so that you know the hippos have got no chance really of driving them off. Alison Leslie is one of the foremost authorities on Nile crocodiles. She explains to one of the film crew the unique manner in which the crocs feed. If it's a bony chunk, they will literally just crush 2,000 pounds per square inch. They will just crush everything until it's in a, in a sort of a soft enough condition that they can just swallow. And if it's a chunk of, say, for example, skin or innards, they just fill their mouth and shake and shake and shake until this food literally slides down their throat. There's some sort of hierarchy there. They rely on each other to actually grab onto either end of a piece of prey, and then they rotate in opposite directions. So although to us it looks like this mad frenzy and splashing and going on, there's actually a really controlled sort of system in place there, amazingly so. This is going to be the end of the road for a lot of salmon. These bears are really hungry. They haven't tasted salmon for 10 months, and the big males battle for the best fishing spots. The longer the salmon take over their journey upstream, the weaker they become. And these falls present them with their biggest challenge yet. Although the falls aren't very tall, the bears hold the high ground. The salmon make short, exploratory leaps to see where the bears are. But they don't always get it right. This mother bear has been waiting months for this moment. Competition is fierce for these first salmon, even between a mother and her own cubs. More and more fish arrive at the foot of the falls. Eventually, they have to go for it, regardless of the danger.
these 35 gram fluff balls must learn fast or face being swept away. Mum leads them down the side of the falls. Mum and Dad gather their chicks, and they're off. The duckling's downy feathers trap air like a life jacket as they bob across the surface. It's a good start. is so strong it carries them downstream through the territory of ill-tempered hippos. And towards the rapids.
all the adults start to harass the caiman. As the cubs keep their distance, Sophia takes her position at the front, sizing up the caiman. Others move in to try to distract it. Diablo once again moves in from behind and goes for the tail. But the caiman refuses to back down. And then begins to fight back. Cubs panic and follow the adults right into the middle of the fight. They're in extreme danger now, so the adult otters step up the assault. The caiman tries to head for the safety of the bushes, but it's too late. He's outnumbered. The otters seize the moment. Incredibly, they overpower the caiman, some holding it down, others biting it in the head. After nearly an hour of brutal fighting, it's all over.